to my YouTube channel and welcome back my subscribers. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and I have an amazing tutorial to show you here and I want to give credit where due. Mel B's Paper Creations. She showed me how to make this and what it is is a carousel album and there's so many things that you could do with this. Um, it was quick to put together. It was fun and an awesome gift giving idea for this year. Now I'll be doing a series of three different tutorials using the carousel kit with different paper. But I want to show you this. It swings around as you can see. It is totally cool. It holds a ton of photos. Um, for instance, uh, let's just open it up like this. It does not hurt it because of the hinging on the dowel in there. But you can take out these and you can put your photos inside there on the back. I have not placed my solid colored cardstock inside this yet, but I wanted to show you. So it came out here and then here is another. This is a picture mat. Isn't that cute? And it's just around and around it goes, you know. And um, I want to, this one is called uh, the uh, Carousel uh, Album. And it's with the Ciao Bella. And I know I'm not pronouncing this right, my Italian friends. <laughs> Brocata Estense. Now, I don't know exactly what that translates to in Italian, but it's something nice. I'll tell you, the paper is amazing. All right, so this is what we will be making today. And uh, what we're going to have to do is, underneath this video, you will find the link to my materials list and the pre-measurement cutting guide. And on the, measure, or the materials list, there are quick, easy links. You just click right on the, the material that you need. It'll take you right to the item to add to your cart. And we are going to go over the materials list and also the scoring uh, that was done uh, on our pre-measurement. Now, one thing about this tutorial is that uh, we won't be cutting the decorative paper together. Reason why <laughs> is because I did not film during the process of that. Um, this was my first one and it came out amazing. Uh, no hiccups along the way and I am going to show you exactly what to do um, and I'm going to show you the paper and places to cut. So no worries, okay? So uh, let's move on to the materials list. Alrighty, we're going to get to the materials list, but first thing you're going to want to do and I apologize if this is hopping around a little, is uh, print out the materials list and pre-cutting measurement guide. Now, make a note right now on your materials list, because I did not add it, solid colored blue cardstock. So, um, page two of this is your pre-measurement cutting guide. And there is no written instructions for this tutorial. It is right here in the video. Uh, however, you're going to want to pre-cut all your craft colored uh, and scoring of your crafty cardstock. So, uh, with that being said, I want to just kind of show you how pretty this is. And I'm going to tilt it. And as you notice, you can actually lay this flat because of the hinging style. And you can open that up. You can place photos here. You can place photos here if you want. Um, this is the folders that you will be pre-cutting. And you can add your cardstock to the inside. And uh, then uh, this is the solid color. This is the only one I had uh, available. It, perhaps uh, a lighter blue. This looks almost like it's a sea foam. But it looks nice anyway. It, it, it really does. So um, optional things to do is, and you'll see that on your materials list, is adding little pull tabs. Now I used a die right here. And it was from my stash. Any die will work, but you will want to die cut it first on a strip 
of leftover craft cardstock. And then you will glue it to your picture mats, okay? And then you just top your thing down. And we'll, we'll revisit that when we're getting to that area of the tutorial. But it is absolutely gorgeous, as you can see. And uh, I just love this. And right up here, I wanted to show you, and I'm not sure with the glare and stuff, but what I did. And I'll help you along with that. Okay, materials. So the first thing that you're going to want to get is my a carousel kit. Uh, I had my casting shop because this is so large. I had them laser cut these pieces specially for this. And I'll show you what's included in this. You're going to get the, and it's medium weight chipboard, and this is your base. Inside, you will also receive one of these, and it's chipboard, and it is a round circle with no hole. You will get three with a hole, okay? You're also going to have a pre-cut dowel so that it actually will fit into this once we glue this all together and get our pieces. All right, then this is something special that I brought in, and this is a heavy-duty turntable, and they are packaged up like this to keep it from getting damaged and shipping, but as you can see, it's not a cheap one. In fact, we tested the weight. You can get up to about 50 pounds of weight on this uh, before it won't turn. Now, of course, we're not going to be loading it 50 pounds on top, our decorations, but it's good to know so that you can place as many heavy metal embellishments at the top or whatever you want to do if you want to do something different. So, and uh, this does have the metal ball bearings and it is a high quality piece. So no worries as far as um, uh, quality, it's there for us. Next item. Now this is by Chow Bella, and this is the, again, I'm not pronouncing it right, Brocato Estense. Now we brought in two different Chow Bella paper packs. This particular one only has eight double-sided sheets, and I'm going to open this up and show this to you. All right, I got it out of the thing. Now, one thing about this paper, it has a different smell, and it's a different quality. It's a good, high-quality paper. It's not too thick to where when you score or bend it or whatever, it cracks. I haven't had it, but of course, going against the grain, it could happen. But it's totally, and I can't explain it. I, I, can't, I have not felt anything quite like this and it's a, a very high quality, nice paper. And here we go, I'm gonna show this to you really quick. Look at that, just beautiful. Now because this paper was, I imported it from Italy. It was very expensive. Uh, shipping was 400 something, almost $500 for me to ship in. I, I actually shipped in 60 of this paper pack and 60 of another, so it, it was so darn expensive for 120 packs of paper to come in that I don't know if I'm going to restock when this is go gone. So if you're wanting to make this, get it now uh, because it's just so, uh, the international shipping and all the fees and everything is just high. Look at that, just vibrant, beautiful artwork. Oh, love it. And we got our tags page. So you'll get one of each of these sheets. And um, like I said, I only used one paper pack because of the cost of it, the price. So you'll want to add in your solid colored cardstock. Now if you're prone for, to making cutting errors or you just love this paper, uh, get two packs. So here we go. This is just amazing. Everything just flows so nicely. Oh, look at that. Just gorgeous. And I love this. 
just gorgeous. Okay, so that is what we uh, will be working with, everyone. And um, don't jump ahead on cutting because there are a few things that I want to show you about cutting. And um, we'll do that uh, together as far as a few of the pieces. Next thing you're going to want is the Coordinations Craft Colored Value Pack. You're going to get 50 sheets of the 65 pound, 8.5 by 11. And um, it, it, look, it looks really good with this paper. All right, so solid colored cardstock just to do the picture mats. And I cut um, to where I had them double sided. And these are, again, the picture mats, double sided. Okay, I used four 12 by 12 pieces. And I will give you the measurements of how I cut this so that you can do it on four. If you are wanting to do inside the folders, you're going to want another four uh, sheets of 12 by 12 solid colored cardstock. Or you can also buy the um, value packs uh, that have uh, different uh, tones of blues and stuff in the 8.5 by 11 size. Okay, you are going to need a roll of quarter inch score tape. You are going to want some bling on the roll, some Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink, and I use the Vintage Photo. And you do not have to do that. Use this around things. In fact, I used it, I wish I would have used it around everything. I mean, it's beautiful as it is, but I did use it around a tag. So um, that's what I used there. You're going to want your Art Glitter Dries Clear Adhesive Glue and the metal tip that goes on there. Flowers. Okay, for the flowers, uh, what you're gonna want is a pack of the Coconut Cream White Paper Roses, and the code is H068. Uh, because I grabbed from my stash for the blue roses on top of my carousel, I would choose these because they go perfectly. They're light and they're dark. They're, um, as you can see, and this will look so nice on top of yours. And these are Blue Ocean Fabric Roses, roses HO70. Okay, other things that you're going to need is, of course, your paper cutter, your scoring board, a ruler, craft knife, your scissors, scoring tool, and pencil. And uh, that is it. And I wanted to show you about all I had left um, at the end of this was just to make a cute little card and um, with, some with some paper in there. So. so I did make that. I wanted to show you that there was enough. You might be able to make two cards actually with the little cutouts and then Put your white paper, maybe find some fussy cutting of the leftover pieces. So we are going to do some scoring together um, just to double check your scoring is accurate. You should have nine pieces of your craft card stock that are four and a half inches by 11 inches. And what we did there was we placed it on our scoring board so we are 11 inches across. We scored at 3 8 inch and 6 and 7 8 inch on all the pieces. Next, what we did was we cut nine pieces of our cardstock 3 inches by 4 and a half. There was no scoring on that one. Then what we did was we we cut an eight and a half by six and a quarter inch piece of craft card stock. There were nine pieces of these that we did. And we laid it on our scoring board so we were eight and a half inches across. We scored it four and a quarter inch. Then we had some picture mats and there was no scoring. We have nine pieces that are six and a quarter by four and three quarter. The last one was one piece of craft, 
card stock that is six and a half inches by nine and a quarter. I have not scored mine yet. Okay, I'm going to score this together. There were quite a few. So the first one we scored at a quarter inch. And it's kind of hard to get in there. So we've got a quarter inch here. Then we scored at five eighths. Then we scored at one inch. We scored at one and a quarter inch. We scored at one and five eighths. And we scored at two inch. We went two and a quarter, two and five eighths, three inch, three and a quarter, three and five eighths, four inch, I'm sliding, four inch, four and a quarter, four and five eighths. 5 inch, 5 and a quarter, 5 and 5 eighths, and 6 inch, 6 and a quarter, 6 and 5 eighths, 7 inch, 7 and a quarter, whoops, get that back up there, 7 and a quarter, seven and five eighths, eight inch, oops, get that on there, eight and a quarter, and eight and five eighths. So that's what ours look like. And we labeled that dowel hinging. Okie dokie, let's move on to assembly. The first piece that we're going to work with is our large round circle. And the paper that I used for that is this one. On the back, it looks like this. So I'm not going to draw on mine because I want to save it for another project. But what you're going to do for this is grab your pencil. You will lay this down in the left-hand corner here. So you will line it up here, down here, and to the side so that you can still get your pencil around. So I'll just leave a little bit showing so you can get your pencil. You're going to trace around this and then you're going to cut it out. You will definitely save your leftovers. So go ahead and do that. Once you have it cut, you will apply glue and glue it down. Really quick tip for uh, when you've traced around, when you are cutting it out, cut just on the inside of your pencil line. It will fit on top of this a lot better. The next thing that you're going to want to do is grab one of your circle pieces. This is your cover and we're going to make good use out of it. Place it down so that right here in the center is centered right there. Your center would be here. Trace around this and then cut out your circle. And again, when you're cutting, cut on the inside, just on the inside of your pencil line. Once you have that, do not glue it down to this. What you're going to do is grab this, okay? You're gonna see two sides. One side, you will notice that the dowel will fit in there, okay? it does not go on this side, a flatter side. So your paper, glue to the side, glue it down on top of this, the side that the dowel sticks into. See? So place your paper there. 
once you have that, what you're going to want to do is place it centered in here. Now I can tell you we're about actually what, 10 and 7 eighths in here. What I did was eyeballed it. Again, our paper's going to be showing up. You will apply your glue to the back side of this and center that and glue it down. And then you'll put some pressure down on that. Okay? Do not glue your dowel down next because we need to create our hinging system here. To make this easier, okay, you see right here where our first quarter inch, I want you to at the top go one and then the next section two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, I think there's 27 unless I skipped. That way I can tell you which section to place your score tape. That way there's no confusion and there's absolutely no wasting because on this style hinging system, if you get one wrong, that's all bad, okay? So let's take a moment and write in each, each section the numbers. I've zoomed in so that you can see how I am folding this. So here's number one. And what we're going to do with that is we're just going to, let's see, so I don't get turned around. Why don't we fold that up? If we have to fold it back the other way, that's fine. We'll just fold that right on up. And you'll want your scoring tool. So I'll just score that down or up, excuse me, so that's up. The next thing is, as you see, two and three, and what we're going to do is we're going to fold again like this. Okay, so we've got this and this. Next, we're going to fold back. You see three and four? Right there. Let's just pinch and fold that up, that little crease towards us there. Okay. Now, the next thing is, so we got that up, and I'll just, so that's what we have. Next, what we want to do is fold this towards us between the four and the five. And again, if I get this backwards, we'll just refold. Okay. So between the five and the six, we're going to have the peak up. So we'll just fold on that and score. So we got the peak and the peak over here. What did I do? No, peak down. Sorry. Let's go back the other way. There. That's better. One was up. Two and three we pinched down. Okay, so you could go like this. Okay, next what we have is our score there. And we'll just go like this. Okay. And then what we did between the four and the five, we're going to just fold that over. Okay. Next, between the six and the seven, we're just going to fold that. Now, now between the seven and the eight, we'll just fold it this way, fold it towards us like this. Okay, 
and you can use your tool when we're all done just to make sure. Now between the 8 and the 9, we're just going to fold it up. between the 9 and the 10, we'll just pinch that and fold it so we had a crease up. Okay. Next, between the 10 and the 11, we'll fold it up this way. Okay. Between the 11 and the 12, we're going to fold that up. Okay. Between the 12 and the 13, we're just going to pinch it to where there is a crease up, so back down. Okay. Then we're going to, between 13 and 14, we're going to fold up. Between 14 and 15, we're going to fold up. Okay. Between 15 and 16, we're going to pinch to make a crease so the crease, the peak, is up towards us. Just like that. Between the 16 and 17, we're going to fold it over, up, like that. Between 17 and 18, we're going to fold it up. Okay. Between the 18 and 19, this is where we're going to pinch it and fold it back behind. Okay, between 19 and 20, we'll just fold over, up, like that. Between 20 and 21, we're going to fold up and over. Between 21 and 22, we're going to fold up and over. Again, if I get this confused, it won't hurt nothing. Okay. Between 22 and 23, we're going to fold up. Okay. Between 23 and 24, we're going to fold up. Okay. Between 24 and 28, we'll fold up. Whoops, between 24 and 25, I can't read my writing, fold up, okay, between 25 and 26, we'll fold up, okay, and then between uh, 26 and 27, let's just fold that up. And we may have to put an extra score line in here. We'll find out soon enough. Alrighty. So, what we're going to want to do for starters is we're going to place our score tape. And I have one already opened here. We're going to place one on the number two section. And we're going to get it in between the score lines. And we're definitely going to want to clip off any overhang. We're going to do this one at a time. We're going to remove that score tape and you're going to pull number three over on top of number two. And you're going to use your bone folder to smooth out. 
Now on number five, we're going to lay our score tape. We'll remove it, the backing, and you're going to pull number six on top of number five. So now what you're going to see is something that looks like this, that's pleated on up. Okay. Number eight. Now on number eight, we're going to lay a piece of score tape. And we're going to remove the backing off that and we're going to pull number nine on top of it. Okay. Number 11, we're going to place our score tape. And number 12 comes over on top of it. I'm just going to pull number 12, I'm going to pinch it, and pull that right on top of number 11. Score tape goes on number 14. Clip off what overhangs here. And number 15 goes on top of 14. So we'll just pinch that. And I may have the scoring wrong on this. But okay. Score tape on number 17. Overhang here. And we're going to roll number 18 on top of 17. And you're going to want to try to keep straight so that your hinge looks good. Okay. Number 20. Gets the score tape. And I'll clip off my score tape here in a moment in the overhang. And number 21 comes over on top of number 20. So 22 is going to be showing up. Twenty-three. Let's get that on there. That's our score tape goes on. Twenty-three is the one that gets the score tape. Twenty-four rolls on top. So 25 will show up. We're going to add an extra score line. So between your 26 and 27, line that up with 4 inches. At 4 and 3 eighths, score. Perfect. We did have to add one more score line to this. And with that little itty bitty little place over there, just fold that right on up, that last little one. Okay, let's go back to what we were doing here. We are right here. So on 26, place the score tape. And 27 is what's going to fold over on it. And then it'll leave you just a little bit of a lip. Whoops. So I'm going to roll that over. And then I have a little 
bit of a lip left. And I'm going to use my scoring tool. So now let's grab our scoring tool and crease. Now flip it over. This is what you're going to see now. You're going to see a series. You're going to see a series of hinges once you flip it over to the side that has no writing. Okay. Here's our first hinge. Here's our second hinge. Our third. Our fourth. Our fifth. Our sixth, our seventh, our eighth, and the last little one is our ninth. The last one before we have that little teeny lip. Now, I'm going to cut off any score tape that I see peeking over for sure, and you should do so uh, as well. It's not really going to matter much because we're not going to see that, but I just want to get some of that off. Before we attach our hinges, and these are the hinges, this is the side that has the writing, what you're going to want to do is not in the gullies, but on the little hinging hinges themselves, as you can see, that stick up. You're going to lay a piece of your quarter inch score tape on each side on all nine hinges. Okay. Once you've laid it, then you're going to clip them at an angle as I've done. And I did it down here as well. Once you do that, I'm going to actually remove this so I can show you easier how this is going to attach. Here's the side of the writing. We're going to apply glue to the back side here, the side with the stuff. All right. This should be all the way down and glued down. So what's going to happen is you're going to wrap this around and that smallest little piece there goes down first. And then this one, the last one, will go over the other and to hit the side of this hinge. And it will fit perfect. Once you have that glued, you're going to take the back end of your scoring tool and go down each one of those. Make sure that glue is down. Okay? Let's grab our pocket. We have the four and a half by 11 inch pockets. Okay, so what we're going to do is also get our three inch by four and a half inch. Okay, that should be exactly the same width as this. So I'm going to set them off to the side there. All right, score tape. So for this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to line one side of each one of these smaller ones with score tape just at the edge. So let's get started on that. First, first things first. I don't want to overwhelm you. So on each one of these I'm just going to do that and I'll be right back. Alright, so that's going to be one pile. Next, what we're going to do is on our pages like this, and I'm going to zoom out. Whoops. That, that little barking noise is my newest little fur baby, and I will show you Sasha in a moment. All right, you have the little score line. Uh, you have the little piece right here, and then there's the uh, bigger area as score here. On this one, what we're going to do is lay a piece of score tape on each one of the small, and the quarter inch fits right in there. And when you're done laying them on all nine pieces, we're going to make sure that we clip off any score tape that's overhanging. So let's do that. Once you've burnished all your score tape down, what you're going to want to do is 
fold up. Make sure your sides are matching. Let me move this out of the way on your larger piece. Then the side that has the score tape, we're going to fold up like so. And we're going to do that with each one of them. So let's do that. I've got mine all ready to go now. Okay, so what you want to do is remove the score tape backing off your pocket. You will grab one of your three inch by four and a half inch and you will just place it right up against it, line it up side to side and pull over that score tape hinge. Now what you'll do is remove the score tape backing off this one Okay, and you will bring that over on top. Okay. There's one. And we're going to do it again. I'm going to remove the score tape backing off my pocket, large pocket thing here. I'm going to grab one of my, my uh, three inch by four and a quarter and I'm going to take this side and I'm going to line it up with the sides of the paper and I'll just flip that right on over and burnish it down. And over here, I'm going to remove the score tape and bring that right on top, lining up the sides. Okay, let's finish up with the rest of these. Alrighty. Uh, the scoring board you can put away. Here we are with the eight and a half by six and a quarter inch folders. We'll be using our scoring tool to crease those and set them aside. So we'll do that with each one of these. So I have scored down, or I have burnished down on each one of my folders. We're going to set the folders off to the side. We will work with those in a moment. Let's grab... So for this, um, before we put anything on these things. What we can do is these three that have the hole, we're going to glue these all together. Now you won't be able to see um, the underneath because uh, it's the top one that... So when you do this, stick it on top and just grab it together. Make sure that the hole is clear. Once you have it in place, you can use your bone folder or whatever you need to make sure that those pieces are snug and down. We're going to do this with this one. Kind of go around making sure you get those edges and around that hole. Same thing, I'm going to grab them both together, make sure that when I place my hands like this, it's nice and even. Then I'll use this to just kind of go like so. Okay, we're going to not glue this on the top just yet because like I said, we're going to use this as a pattern and it's easier when it's not attached. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is be, it's going to be easier for me to show you because there's only eight sheets. If it were ten sheets, it'd be different. But I am going to take a moment to actually cut, and I am going to make a second one here, and I'll just sell one off. Okay, so give me a few minutes, and I'm going to get to where you guys are. Okay, so I'm caught up to you guys. I got mine down. Um, leftover paper that I have is this, and I'm going to stick this off into a separate pile. Uh, that separate pile is going to be called our reserve pile. So now I'm going to set this off to the side to let my everything glue and set, and we're going to get on to our pockets. In your paper pack, you will find this gorgeous print. Now, we're going to be laying these kind of side by side, so we'll cut for two at a time. And um, on the back side, it looks like this. So, and I can read the writing, so it's upright, but I'm going to turn it like this. I'm going to measure over six and a quarter inches, 
and cut. So I cut mine in half. For now, this side is going to go with our reserve paper pile. Okay, this is the one that we want. Turn it back like this. Measure over four and three eighths inch and cut. Measure over again four and three eighths inch and cut. The small piece stick in your reserves. All we're going to do with this is we're going to apply glue to the back and we are going to center these top to bottom so you'll have a little more of a uh, trim top and bottom and a little bit side to side there and we're just going to glue that down. So after you glued it down how we're going to do this is like so. Uh, when we have this sitting these two over our uh, hinges like so when we open it up, it's going to face like this. So what I want you to do is flop one over the other. Then I want you to grab another one of your pockets and set it off to the side. All right, in your paper pack, you will find this print. It's absolutely amazing. On the back, it looks like this. We're going to turn it, looking at it like so, the big flowers down here. Measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Stick this piece in your reserves. Okay, measure over six or measure over four and three eighths of an inch and cut. Measure over again four and three eighths of an inch and cut. And then the small piece that's left over, stick in your reserves. Apply glue to the back and glue these down, just like that, centering them top to bottom and side to side. Got mine down. We're going to flip this one on top of the other, and we're going to grab another one of our pieces and set it side to side. So in your paper pack, you will find this print on the back. It looks like this. Measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. This is what you should have. Now look at it like this. Measure over four and three eighths and cut. Measure over again four and three eighths and cut. Okay, apply glue to the back. Place this one there and this one here. I've got mine down. Let's flip this over. Grab one of your other pieces and we're ready to find our paper for these. In your paper pack you will find this print. On the back it looks like this. We're going to turn it so the birds up here measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Okay we're going to be cutting this a little bit differently. The first one I got glue all over me. Measure over four and three eighths and cut. Then what you'll want to do is flip it around so the birds over here measure over four and three eighths and cut. Apply glue to this side and we're going to glue the bird to the left and we'll glue this other one to the right. However, on this particular one, we're going to turn it upside down so the lace is up here to match the lace up here. And the little doily is down here. And then once you're done with that, you'll flip this one over. So this is one where we actually are going to need a few pieces because we do uh, we do uh, have to conserve on paper. So in your reserves you will have this small cutting, one of the leftovers. On the back it looks like this. You will also have this on the back. It looks like this. We just cut this. Okay, we'll just put that off. You'll also have this beautiful print. On the back, it looks like this. Let's start with this one. On this particular one, we're going to start looking at it like this. Measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Now, I want you to stick this on your paper cutter. And uh, just to the right of that tail, I want you to cut. The little skinny piece that you just cut off, definitely put that in your reserves. We use a lot of scraps in this. Flip this around, measure over four and three eighths, and cut. Then you'll put your small piece in your reserves. 
on this piece, measure over one and one eighth inch and cut. Okay, apply glue to this and glue it down. First, we'll apply glue to this one and we're gonna bring it over like we have been where there's only a little bit of border showing. So we'll glue that one down and then this one comes right next to it and it will fit perfectly. Okay, so there's the first one. Now I'll apply glue and I'm gonna put that up right next to it because they're the same size. And then that will look like that. So let's do that. Got mine down, I'm gonna flip this over and I'll grab another one of these. Grab this out of your reserves and we are gonna look at it like Actually, you'll see part of a cutoff over here of this. We'll look at it like this. Measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. So we are six and a quarter inches this way. You'll see part of your writing cut off up here. We're going to measure over four and three eighths and cut. Okay, apply glue and glue that down. In your paper pack, you will find this, the tag sheet. Now on this one, we're gonna do something a little bit different because we don't wanna cut a clear cross. So grab your ruler, place it down at the edge here, and we are gonna measure over four and three eighths and make a pencil mark, okay? And I'm going to bring mine down so I can see it just a little bit better. Four and three eighths. Right down here under the tag would be a good spot. Okay, next what we're going to do is turn it like this. Okay, we're now like this. From this side, you're going to just try and line it up with that little thing here, your little mark. Measure over six and a quarter inches, okay? So now when you put this on your paper cutter, you're gonna cut straight across to this point, and then you will cut down. So you're gonna leave this whole sheet uh, uncut on this side, and I'll show you mine. So this is what my leftover looks like, and I'm gonna put this in reserves, okay? So we're going to apply glue to this side now, and we're going to glue this on there. We'll add our little sentiments um, when we're all done. So this can now be flipped over this way. So in your reserves, I want you to pull this piece out. On the back, it looks like this. We'll need that. A couple things off this, in fact. You'll also find the smaller piece that looks like this. On the back, it has the, the bird. Alrighty, so what we're first going to do is we're going to take this one, it's going to go on our left side, we're going to apply glue, and this is going to be seamed, so make sure you get glue there. And you're going to bring that over, center top, uh, top and bottom, and you're going to glue that down. So let's do that. Now, I want you to grab this sheet, looking at it like this, I want you to measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Now, measure over four and three eighths inch and cut. And keep that little cutting, because we need that. Apply glue to the back of this one, and we'll glue that down. On this one, what we're going to do is trim the fit. So I'm going to bring it just underneath the edge of this side, moving it over to where it needs to be, giving me a border. I'm going to make a pencil mark where that seam is. Now I'm going to trim. Once you've done that, you will uh, apply glue and glue it down. And I gotta get this one down, and once you're done, we will flip it over and grab our next sheet or pocket actually. In your paper pack, you will find this print on the back. It's blue. So we're gonna turn it looking at it like this. The big rose is down here, the big flower. Measure over six and a quarter inch and cut. 
measure over 4 and 3 8 inch and cut, measure over again 4 and 3 8 inch and cut. Okay, apply glue to these and glue them down. Okay, flip this one over. Also, on the very bottom, you'll have this. Flip that over. In your paper pack, you will have this print on the back. It looks like this. Alrighty, flip it upside down. You're going to measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Okay, now measure over four and three eighths and cut. Apply glue to the back and put this one down. In your reserves, you will have this gorgeous print. There's a house over here. We're going to flip it over like this. Measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Now we're going to flip the image so that the rose is down here and the lace is here. Measure over four and three eighths and cut. Apply glue to this side and glue that down. We're going to start attaching our pieces here. So let's grab our base. We are ready to attach our pockets. So I'm going to tip mine up like this and I'm going to show you first before I do it. What we're going to do, and you can do this too for now, is we're going to take off one side, actually both sides of one of the hinges, the score tape backing. So as you can see, I have that off. The next thing that I'm going to do is slide this over the hinge until it's all the way in. So as you can see, I am going to slide that in there and slide it on the bottom all the way down until it is completely flush. Make sure you are off the bottom. Once you have it there, you can pinch here and you'll want to pinch down here, but it's easier doing it upright. So I have it down and I'm using two fingers to pinch. And then what I can do is, you don't have to worry about these because the hinges, you can pull them back. But we're gonna make sure that it's down. And the reason why we attach this first before we put our pockets on is because you want the the hinging system that's on the dowel all the way down at the bottom. Otherwise, you might not get it on correctly or straight. So that is on. So I got this one. We're going to work to the hinge to the left now. Okay. I'm going to release the score tape backing off this side and this side. Okay, so what I have facing is this one right now. Okay, this is the side that's going to face this side. So I'm going to put it in like this. I'm going to open it up, get that bottom in there, get it all the way down. Once I have it there, I can pinch at the top, pinch at the bottom and smooth it with my fingers to make sure that that's down. So we're going to move on. The next one is this one. It's going to face this one because we did I did kind of uh, coordinate these. That's why we had them in two stacks. Once it's in, I'll pinch here, I'll pinch down here, and I'm going to smooth it down. Next, is this one. It will face that and we're going to place this on. Next in our pile is this beautiful blue one and it's going to face this one. So let's get that on there. Next is the bird is going to face this one. Next we have this bird and it faces this one when we put it on. Next is this one and it faces the flowers there. Last one is this, and it faces the flower. 
and matches. Okay, we got everything on there. Remember, you can always pull them back and like this to look at them. And you could have coordinated your papers any way that you want, but uh, I, I like to show people exactly how I do mine. So, in case you want to do an exact, if you like the way I coordinated my papers. Let's set this off to the side and grab our uh, folders because we're going to start putting uh, paper on our folders. So for your folders, the opening um, is on this, uh, the way I did it was the opening would be to the left. If you'd rather slide it in this way and have your opening off like that, you can do it. So. We're going to be stacking these all so that the peak is on the right, the openings on the left. Okay, in case you do not want to um, cut the same as me and you want to do your own, um, I'm going to tell you, um, on the folders, the decorative paper will be 3 and 7 eighths inch wide by 5 and 3 quarters tall. The reason why I did that and left a larger border around is for paper to make sure I had enough. If I was to cut this longer, I may not have enough. So in your reserves, you will find this sheet. So you're going to find this beautiful print. On the back, it looks like this. We're going to look at it like this. We're going to measure over five and three quarters inch and cut. Now we'll measure over 3 and 7 eighths inch and cut. We'll apply glue to the back of this and we're going to center this giving ourselves a nice border. So let's do that. And One thing you may want to do is once you have your glue down is use your bone folder and make sure that that's down uh, really good. So not that it matters. You can slide this in any one that you want. but. The bird one, see these two pages here? I'm going to slide it in this one. Like I said, it does not matter. But that's what I'm doing. Next one. In your reserves, you will find this print. Measure over 3 and 7 eighths inch and cut. The small piece goes in reserves. Remember, your opening is to the left. Apply glue and glue that down. Okay, on my carousel, this page here, I'm just going to slide that right on in. Next, in your reserves you will find this print on the back. It looks like this. Measure over 3 and 7 eighths inch and cut. The height should already be five and three quarters about, thereabouts. Apply glue and glue that down. So I have these two prints and I'm just going to slide that one, this folder, right in there. In your reserves you will find this one. On the back it looks like this. Turn it so you're looking at it this way. Measure over five and three quarters inch and cut. This is what you should have. Turn it upside down. Measure over four or three and seven eighths inch and cut. Apply glue to this side and glue it down. On my carousel, the page that has there's a bird there and there. I'm just going to slide this one right in here. It has a lot of color to it. There. Next one. In your reserves, you will find this print on the back. It looks like this. Now, this should already be five and three quarters inch. We have our writing down here. Measure over three and seven eighths inch and cut. Apply glue to that side and glue that down. On my carousel, I'll just slip this one right in here. 
In your reserves, you will find this print. On the back, it looks like this. We're going to measure over five and three quarter inch and cut. Grab this out of your reserves. On the back, it's blue. Measure over three quarters of an inch and cut. All right, we're going to apply glue here and we will glue that down. We'll apply glue to the back of this and we'll slightly uh, overlap that and glue it down just like that. On my carousel, and like I said, it matters not. I'm just showing you in case you want exactly the placement I had. I'll slip it in this one right like that. The next one is this. It's the print in your reserves with the house on it. On the back it looks like this. Measure over 3 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Apply glue and glue that down. In your reserves you will have your tag page. Let's cut out and around the bird tag and we'll ink around the edges with our brown ink. Grab some of your glue and you'll just put some along the bottom here. Hello glue. Okay, you don't want it to go uh, off the page too far but you can to where the corner of this meets the corner of your thing. So you just bring it up, place it. If you'd like to do a little glue on the edge, you can so that in case you slide something back behind, it doesn't fall out. Okay, on my carousel, for now until we do some more decorating, we're just going to slide that in this sleeve pocket. Alrighty, so in your reserves, you're going to find two pieces that look like this. On the back, they look like this. Sticking them together, they are 3 and 7 eighths, and they should be the correct height. So we are going to apply glue to this, and make sure you get right at that seam, and you'll place that down, and the same thing for this. And we'll place that down right next to it, just like that. On my carousel, it will just slide right in on this page. We are going to put the top on before we do our picture mats. And, and where's my glue before it dries up? Grab your round piece. And also, in your reserves, you will find this piece. So I wanted to get as much blue as I could, so I'm just going to place this down. Here's the white flower, and I'll place this down uh, in the corner down here. And we're going to trace around it. We'll add our final touches to the inside. And we are going to cut out and around, and I'm going to go just on the inside of the pencil line when I cut. Once you have it cut out and you verify you fit, apply glue and glue that down. And when you're gluing this down, whoops, we're bouncing around. When you apply your glue, just make sure that you are even around, just like that. Grab your circular piece, and this is our one piece and we're going to apply glue around the hole. Just kind of, and you want to make sure you get around those edges there. Put this on top, make sure you're even around by placing your hands around, and smooth it down. It is now time to place this on top of our carousel. I'm going to place glue inside the hole and around the inside of those edges. This should fit on top and you're going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. It should go right on down. While that's drying, we're going to get some of the pieces, little cutout pieces that we're going to need for decorating. The first one that we're going to cut out is this top one. 
and you are going to want to leave the brown around it. So I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to come out a little bit on the sides and I'm going to come just above the other sentiment so that it gives me a border. We're also going to cut out love and we'll get our brown ink ready there. All right, infinite love. And we do only have a border on the top and the bottom for that. Infinite beauty, we're gonna leave some of that brown border. And I'll even this up over there. Life is like a flower. So for now, I'm gonna cut, and I'm not gonna leave a border. We are going to cut out, be happy, there is no border. Oops. We want to get bloom where you're planted and we want the border on that. Whoops, I'm sticking. Time to degoo my scissors. So I'm going to come just below this sentiment here. I'm going to come over, give myself some border. Be always blooming, we'll take that too. This is optional, but I am going to be inking around all these edges. And there are some that sit on the top that we're going to have to put on our scoring board. So for now, just ink around some of those edges. So there are a few that I want you, or actually four, that I want you to set off to the side. Her heart was like a secret garden. Bloom where you're planted. Infinite love and love. These are for our top. So I'm gonna set these off to the side. Okay, be happy. Be happy goes. Be happy. We're going to apply glue and glue that right here. Infinite Beauty. This one we're going to apply glue to the back and it goes right like this underneath the bird tag. Life is like a flower. So this one gets glued right here. This one right here. So let's do that. Last one, be always blooming, apply glue, and glue that down right like that. To finish the top, we do need one more thing. So what we're going to do is starting here, and I'll bring it up, this is that one cutting. Starting over here, we are gonna cut out and around, to fussy cut this, okay? And you're gonna come all the way over here, and come down. So let's do that and I'll show you mine. Now one thing I want to say that when you are cutting instead of cutting over from the side here start here and around. We are going to need some of that. This is what mine looks like. Now everyone has their own techniques on fussy cutting. So uh, no right or wrong here. It's going to work. So long as you started where I told you to and ended where I told you to. I lied, we do have one more thing that we need to do, okay? 
Um, as far as this piece, make sure you are straight going across the bottom. It'll be easier as straight as you can. Now just stick that on there and you're going to score right where the line of blue meets the tan. It's a very fine line. If you need to, if it's too little for you based on, you can go in just a little bit higher. Okay? And you'll fold now. It'll be easier if you fold now. Now, snip. You're going to keep snipping little intervals up to that score line. This is what's going to help you guys get this to hold down and the curve that we want. Whoops. As you can see, I have several little cuts here. So just put them all towards the back. Now what I did was I just kind of went like this, and a backwards S. And I'll just set this off to the side. This one, just put it at the edge, because our paper was straight over there, and score the same amount, maybe 3 sixteenths. Remember, you'll want to fold first because it's a bear once you've uh, uh, on something like this, it's it's too hard to fold correctly once you've got your snips. And we're going to do the same thing here. And you can just kind of give that a bend, backwards S or so. All right, well, I think that is the last scoring that we need to do. I'm going to grab this, and it will be easier for you to see looking at it down to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so before we add glue, we're just going to kind of do that S shape. And you're going to leave room in between here. Okay, this one is going to bend back around like this. So we're going to make a kind of a circle, oval circle on top. All right, this side over here, just bend a little and we can shape it in just a moment. We're going to attach so and when you do this make sure that your little flaps and if you need to put an extra cut where we folded do so but this is going to make sure that you have that down so this is going to be even with it. Pinch those together hopefully get that on there just be as even as you can so when you push it they should be the same okay once you have that side and it may take a moment uh, over here you're going to bend it in and it's going to attach over here making sure and you can put more of your little slits in if needed because that one has to come in there and around okay bring this around make sure these are flat and even with it and when you do that your little prongs of your fussy cutting will be off to the side like that and that's those little things are what we're going to wrap slightly onto this so you're gonna have to hold it for a moment all right, so we got our shape, our oval kind of looks like this. It is time to get this all together and on our piece. So I'm looking at it with the white facing me, and that is the side that this is going to be on, like so. Add your glue to the bottom of those prongs. Now this is something we're just going to have to hold until it's down and we can wipe up any glue that decides to give us problems. Just give yourself a bend. And if you don't get it exact, it does not matter because honestly, any way you place this is gonna look good. And I'm gonna use this uh, tool to just kind of smash down the little prongs, make sure they're down. Wonder.
wonderful. So we're going to turn it around. So now I am looking at this side of it with the flower. It's time to get our flowers out. And you're definitely going to want some of your wire. Okay. Because that's what sticks up from in here. We're going to start with, um, and I am going to cut the wire down here, right here, and leave the wire intact on that piece. This is where hot glue, um, you may want to get some hot glue out, so I'm going to need one. Well, that one came off. I'll need another one for this side. Let's see, one, two, three. Okay, so three to start. Grab your infinite love, and we're going to do the same thing. Create an S. Okay. All we're going to do here is glue right behind. So I'm going to show you where I'm going to put mine. A little bit of glue. Well, actually, that's more glue than I... And we're going to, and we can reshape this too, remember. So just like that, bloom where you're planted. We're going to fold up and kind of out. And I'll show you where I'm placing it, a little bit of glue there. Placed it right like that. And I'm just going to make sure it's touching and stick it. Now, these sometimes will fall out until we get our picture mats in there. And you can get probably more than one picture mat in this. Alrighty, bloom where you're planted. If you've got your hot glue ready, and I think you can see this from looking down, my infinite love is here, and bloom where your planet is here. I'm going to stick one of my roses, and I'm going to show you and lift it up right here. See that? Next. So, and you can clear off the glue strings. If you want to use your regular glue, go ahead. I placed one here and one to the back side. And you can kind of open these flowers up sometimes a little bit more if you want. I'm going to turn it around so I'm looking at her heart was a secret. We're going to grab a couple more of these and we're going to clip them. Right over here, and I'll show you really quick. Sorry if that is bouncing around once again. I stuck one right here. The other one's going to go right next to it. like that. Now it's time for this. And we have not forgotten the word love. That goes on in just a little bit. All right, for these. If you have a little stylus, you can do curly cues on these. Um, I did that on the other one. First off, I bent this big piece so it had something to glue down to, and I measured what I was going to need. And it looks like I need to add some glue to this little flower here and bring it up. There we go. So I measured what I was going to need so that the flowers can still be seen. 
over the top. Okay, I'm going to take a moment and I am going to curly cue these. And by curly cue, if you have the Heartfelt Creations uh, Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit, there is this on here and all I did, this is real simple. So I just grabbed it and twirled it around a little to make some curly cues with the wire that is left over. Once I've done that, I'm going to add hot glue to the bottom of this, like so. And I'm just going to stick it in. And I can, once this glues down, be careful not to burn yourself, I can maneuver my roses any way I want. The blue. All I'm going to do with my blue is bend it at the bottom. Before I put glue down on that, I'm just going to kind of put it in, and then I can arrange my flowers. So I think that's good enough. Put a hot glue in the bottom of that, make sure it doesn't get all over the place. And I will place that right there. Give it a moment to grab. Now one thing you can do is push your flowers down because they're still on the wire and you can arrange them to however you want to look. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I am looking at the side that says her heart. This is where I take the love and I glue it to the flowers. So I'm gonna use my hot glue and I'll show you really quick what I've done. And I glued them up there, as you can see. All right. So the top is done, very simple. We're gonna set this off to the side now. And what we're gonna work on is our pitcher mats. And I'm gonna show you uh, some cuts that will make your life easier. Oh, did you know that we're missing a folder? You may have already known that. Hang tight. Let me get the paper. I'm pretty sure we're missing a folder. Maybe I'm wrong. Call me crazy, but I'm missing a folder, so I'm assuming this was sitting off this side. In your reserves, you will find this beautiful little print. It will fit. Let's see here. Let's flip it over this way. Looking at it like this, measure over three and seven eighths inch and cut. Apply glue, and remember opening is over there. Glue that down, and we're gonna stick that in the missing slot. Well, at least mine is. Pitcher mats. I have one of my 12 by 12 sheets. And you know, we may not need a total of five, just maybe four uh, sheets, but uh, what I'm gonna do is divide this up in four by six uh, cuts. That will give me six four by six pieces. So I'll show you mine. Now notice when you, um, this is where you can do your adjustments. Now notice when I place this down and I leave myself the same amount of border here and on the sides, there would be a lip. Now that is optional for you uh, if you have a paper puncher that is the half inch, you could go ahead and just punch along the long side and uh, you would have that. And I can demonstrate that rather than die cutting all these. People who like to die cut their trim, what you can do to make sure that you fix, I wanted to make sure everyone had an option. And if you have absolutely no die cutters or punches, you still have something to grab onto and pull it out. Those of you that have this, what you'll want to do is place your trim just like that. And what you can do then is once you know where it's supposed to be there, you can actually make a pencil mark on to trim it shorter. Then what you do is if you're using all the same ones, you measure what that was. So four and a quarter or so. And then you can cut these all down to four and a quarter. And then all you have to do is slide that on in the middle. 
I hope that made sense. So what I'm going to do is use my quick and easy cute little punch and I think it's this one that I am going to use and this is the elegant flourish scroll and I'm going to demonstrate how that kind of looks. I'm going to apply glue and glue that down and then here is my picture mat. Now one thing is if you have open ends like this um, sometimes it will catch so what you can do is just cut, and this is what I do, because I, I think that the, using the punch is really quick and easy, is I just cut on scrap pieces of my cardstock. I'll flip it over. I will apply some glue, and then I'll just fit it along the edge and half the time you won't even be able to tell that this was done. So, I got one of these going on. Now I'm going to apply glue and glue that down. Okay, and once that's down, I can slide it back behind my folder. Now look. Pretty. Very pretty. So let's go ahead and, and do that on all of these. And you'll need to cut more of your mats. My carousel is complete. And I want to thank you all for joining me on this tutorial. Um, it was a lot of fun. and. Um, I will be doing, like I said, a series of these. So I have uh, two more to do, and I think one of them might even be a recipe book, a holiday-themed one to put all of our favorite holiday uh, recipes in, in a turntable style. Happy crafting, everybody. See you next time.